which is ranked number one in a state in St. Thomas Aquinas. Jack, we have our hands full tonight, buddy. Yeah, we do, Will. And this is one of those games where it's just tough. You know, this is the third year we've played them in a row. And, you know, as a player, I was trying to put myself in their shoes this week. It would be hard to mentally, let alone physically, prepare for this game, you know, knowing what you're going into and how little to no chance you have of winning. But it all comes down to just give it your best every play. That I mean, what else can you do? Yeah, you mentioned that, Jack. You, if anybody gets the Parsons Sun, you see the article Sean Fry released this week. Um, very first thing Coach Price said in a question to Sean was, what do you do when you're going up against someone that you're not supposed to beat? <laughs> yeah, you're not even supposed to be able to stay on the same field with them. I mean, we talked. We've had an opportunity to visit with a fan here, and all we hear about is how big they are, their defensive line, how powerful they are, and then you flip to the offensive side of the ball where you got two linemen who have offers to Kansas State University, yeah. mm -hmm. and then a wide receiver that's going to split out, and that'll be number three, Daniel Jackson. I'm sure we'll hear his name a lot. Yeah, he's verbally committed this week to Minnesota University. And then on the other side, we haven't got his name yet. We'll see who it is when he shows up. But another receiver who has an offer to Arizona State. Jack, there's a lot yeah. to deal with in two sides. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any – I mean, you know, they've got like D1 stars, as you were just saying. I mean, guys that here in a year will be playing on TV, possibly. And so, I mean, it's just kind of hard. You know, how do, our team doesn't change, just our opponent. So do we just stick to our game plan and just do what we've been doing? Or do you change it? to maybe even keep players healthy because we have some players that are banged up that are suiting up tonight. John Kohler, uh, well, I guess Austin isn't playing, of course, tonight. But, you know, a couple things going on. So what, what, what is the game plan tonight? What do you do? You know, you attack that from two different ways. The first way is minimize, take the air out of the ball, as you'd say as a basketball coach. As long as you have the ball, they don't. Yeah, and so as hard as that is, you got to control the time of possession, whether that's to win the game or at least keep this game within fighting distance. Right. I mean, if you come in and win it, Jack, I'm sorry, the instant thing that comes oh. to my mind, the movie Facing the Giants, because <laughs> yeah. if you were here watching this game tonight, guys, you're going to see on two sides of the field, Bishop Miege is going to have 72, 72 players tonight in uniform. Labette County is only going to have 39. Yeah, and the so numbers even. completely – outmatched they've got a second string they've got a third string they've got a fourth string <laughs> yeah. maybe even a fifth string if we're lucky <laughs> yeah and so that's where we at jack let's take 60 seconds here on klkc and we'll get back to it True. What's going to happen tonight, in your opinion? Yeah, well, I was talking to you on the way up here a little bit about how, well, last year's game, for example, let's see, a second quarter, I don't remember exactly what the score was, but it was close. We hadn't scored, obviously, but they hadn't blown up yet. It was like 7-0, 14-0, six minutes or so left in the first half. Um, and then at halftime, it's like 28-0. And so it's just like, boom, you know, it's like they started trying. So I don't know if... Like you were saying, they may come out of the gate and just start going off. You know, come out of the gate 
bomb, bomb, and here in five minutes it might be 21 nothing. It may be that type of game. Or it could take them a minute to warm up. Maybe the underdog gets some momentum to start. So I think, you know, the tempo to start the game, I'm interested to see um, if they just go crazy or if the game takes time to settle in. Yeah, you talk about being the preparing to come out for Miege first game, first round of state playoffs. But Miege is in unfamiliar territory as well. We've never seen this, a Bishop Miege team listed at the four seed. I mean, two losses, St. James Academy, St. Thomas Aquinas, yeah. both known for football, known yeah. for their size. But another thing that's impressive, I mean, Grant, he has all the talent in the world. Coach John Holmes, I stalked their Twitter a little bit this week. And you'd look, and first thing you see on their Twitter page is state champions, 2014, 2015, <laughs> 2016, 2017, 2018. Four yeah. consecutive titles. It doesn't get much better that, than that yeah. for any program. And you look at the rankings of who has the best chance to win the 2019 state champion in football. Bishop Miege comes in tonight with a 54% chance to win it all. Taganoxie and Pale will then fall all the way down to 36%. Yeah, big, that's a big gap. And those two teams would be powerful as Bishop Miege. Now we look, Bishop <laughs> Miege coming out onto the field with fireworks sounding as Labette County gets ready to take the field right behind them. Jack, they're putting it all on the line right yeah. now. They got fireworks <laughs> They got everything, going. man. All 72 that's, players yeah. are out here. That's uh, right. Labette County's 40 are over there. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean – I know the coaches would say the exact same thing, but these kids have worked so hard all year long, even throughout the summer. And, you know, it's just heartbreaking to have to play me. <laughs> it's just impressive <laughs> right now, isn't it, Jack? Well, it's, we're laughing guys, because someone – It's just – it's 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 interesting to sit here and look. If I was to take a screenshot, I'd challenge everybody. If, when Harrison flips this camera for us, we challenge everybody just to look at these sidelines. It is – Five to two right now. Five to one. <laughs> Jack, you got to quit. So now as you look on the camera, guys, if you're watching live, just look at the sidelines as we are just completely outmatched. But while we regain ourselves and look at these sidelines, we're going to take a 60-second timeout here on KLK.
football game. So it should be interesting just to watch the talent that's coming. But in the same time, we hope LeBeck County can at least compete in this football game and not fall apart right from the beginning and make the last three quarters a struggle. Yeah, and for, I just want to make it clear, I wasn't laughing at the size of our team. There was a player that tripped and fell, and that is, that's what I was laughing at, so I just want to clear that up. But, um, no, seriously, I mean, you know, I'm excited for these boys. I mean, I know they're probably not too pumped right now. But, you know, to have the opportunity to play in this spotlight, and, you know, they work so hard, like I was saying, throughout the summer, all the time they're hit in the weight room, working on plays all the time. I love these kids. I go to school with them every day. Good kids. So I'm excited for them. I hope that they stay healthy and have a fun time tonight. Captains for tonight's game for Bishop Miege, number 59, Brian Burns, a senior, 6'5", 260-pound offensive lineman, one of which I believe has the offer to K-State University. Number three, Daniel Jackson, senior, 6'1", 181-pound wide receiver, committed to, Air to Minnesota this <laughs> week. Number 15, Mikey Welsh, senior, 5'11", 200-pound linebacker. He is in a walking boot and will not play tonight. And number 22, Bryson Cobbins, senior running back, 5'8", 173 pounds. LeBec County's captain tonight, number 33, Caleb Haggard. Number 14, Nathan Smith. Number 23, Trent Brock. And number 50, I'm not sure who that is. Joel Mathis. Oh, there you I go. I thought it was, but I wasn't 100% <laughs> yeah. sure there, Jack. So, Jack, what just happened in that coin toss? You know I wasn't paying attention. That's why you asked me that. I, I know someone, they just, someone deferred. Yeah, deferred. LeBec County will receive. Okay, yeah, yeah. Jack, I hope you start to pay attention tonight. <laughs> so as we get ready for kickoff, LeBec County will get the ball to start this game. So we'll get a look at what the Grizzlies have in store tonight. As number six, Noah Yeoman will be out of this ball game tonight as he sustained a concussion last week against the Chanute Blue Comets. So taking his place tonight will be Trey Vinson as I'm trying to hunt down Trey's number, number 16, the freshman. So we'll see what the freshman has in store for us tonight as he's going to get a welcome to his very first varsity action against a very powerful Bishop Miege football team. Let's take time for station identification here on KLKC. will be waiting for him turn 39 Hudson Flum the senior 5'8 175 70 pound kicker as LeBec County set up back deep will be number 23 Trent Brock and I have not seen who is on the far side yet as we'll see he's gonna get the ball to start it's Chase be number Evans. 15 Chase Evans as it goes through the back of the end zone that is something that we, we do I don't not know if we've see seen. too often. <laughs> so a kick through the back of the end zone for Miege right to start off the this bat. game. And it will be Lebec County ball at the 20-yard line. Yeah, Jack, we don't see that too often. That's an impressive kick. Yeah, no, yeah, it really was. I mean, mostly we've just seen like, you know, around the 20-yard line even, maybe the 10 at the most so far. But I don't, I don't think I've seen one actually touch back this year. Good crowd in attendance tonight for yeah. Lebec County making the trip north as a handoff up the middle to number 15, Chase Evans. Looks like he lost one on the play. It'll bring up second down and 11 for the Grizzlies. Yeah, and we talk about, you know, how great Miege is. Like, the big thing is their lines. Their D-line and O-line, they're big, big guys. And that's what the fan was telling us before the game <laughs> yeah. that their defensive line is the one to watch. Their offensive line isn't near as good, so we'll see. As there's a direct snap to Chase Evans, and they just wait right on it. As Cooper Peak was in the running back position, as he looked for the flip, but Evans kept it, wrapped up immediately. Now a loss of five yards, third down and 15 for the Grizzlies. Yeah, man, I mean, usually, you know, back home, on that play, what would be maybe at worst, you know, a loss of one or so. They were in the backfield before we could even hand it off. So now Cooper Peak switches to shotgun. Evans to his right. There's a snap. Miege right through the line. Quick curl right to Nathan there Smith. You go. Great catch and gain of 10. So now fourth and five for the Grizzlies out to the 25 as Lebec County will set to punt. Not a bad throw there. Miege off a little bit on the defensive side. Not press coverage. So Peak completes his first pass of the game yeah and that's like the bread and butter of this offense you know Nathan Smith on a slant route I mean you know that's 
that, that's that's what it is for this offense. Caleb Haggard on the punt for the Grizzlies as there's a snap and the punt is away. It is blocked as Miege comes flying through the line. Nathan Smith fighting for it. And it will be four and out as the kick is blocked by number 42 for Miege. Grant Fussell, he is a senior six foot, 181 pound D back. So Miege will have their first possession at the Grizzly 13 yard line. Yeah, I'm curious to see what Coach Argerbright does here on defense. Granted, the position that they're in, you know, I, I love, I'm a huge Coach Argerbright fan. I think he's a great defensive coordinator, so I'm curious to see what, what he's drawn up. Quarterback tonight for Miege will be number 18, Timothy Dorsey, as he is just a junior. And there's a handoff to number 22 as he will walk his way into the end zone. Bryson Cobbins from 10 yards out, 13 mm. yards out, one play, six points on the board for Miege. Yeah, I mean, what can you say? I mean, I don't know if he was maybe tugged on a little bit. I don't know if he was touched at all, but, I mean, what can you say about that? Not a whole lot as Miege will be on now to kick the extra point, and the kick is up, and he drills it. So two minutes into this ball game, Lebec County goes four and out, and Miege quickly on the board, up seven to zero. Let's take thirty seconds here on KLKC. When it comes to choosing the best health care for yourself and your loved ones, there are other hospitals, and then there's our hospital. The difference is that while other hospitals will care for you, we will actually care about you. Other hospitals make decisions based on what's best for their bottom line, while we do what's best for our community. If you're looking for a pretty hospital. They're out there. But if you're looking for the best hospital, it's here. And here. When award earning care is as close as this, there's no reason to go anywhere else. At Labette Health, we center around you. Bishop Miege set to tee it up as once again it'll be number 39, Hudson Plum, the senior kicker at 5'8, 170. First kick we saw him boot it through the end of the back yeah. of the end zone as Trent Brock and Chase Evans will be back once again to return it for the Grizzlies. As again, we mentioned in this situation, we would usually see Noah Yeoman back, but tonight it is Chase Evans as Yeoman is out with a concussion for this ball game. Yeah, and he took a shot. Man, he took a shot last week. Another booming kick right out the back of the end zone again as that landed on the A halfway back. What a boot. Yeah. Because that kid is only... 170 pounds, but he kicks it like he's a lot bigger. Yeah, I wonder what their punter can do, but we might not get to see him tonight. <laughs> I would not count on that one tonight, Jack, but maybe we'll be surprised. And yeah, you never we know. And we'll get a three and out a couple right. of times this ball game. As Lebec County's offense comes on now for its second possession of the game, trailing seven to nothing now. It'll be Cooper Peak at the quarterback position with Evans to his right. They have three wide receivers split out to the near side. One to the far side. There's a snap and a quick slant to Nathan Smith thrown behind him. Smith had a yeah. couple yards between him and the corner, but Peak didn't hit him in the numbers. Incomplete pass. Second down and ten now for the Grizzly offense. Yeah, I mean he. Yeah, I mean he was open there. Good I mean, route. Just yeah, yeah, it really was. And Nathan's probably like, oh my gosh, finally not double coverage. <laughs> you know, I mean even if they are a step higher in play. And there's a snap to Peak as he looks to pass. Quick curl route to Derek Jones as Jones is just thrown back. I mean wrapped up, no body used, just slung Jones back for four back four yards. But Jones gets forward progress. Yeah. Third and seven. Anything forward is good. I mean, especially in this scenario. We talk about Miege and how big they are. Jack, they come in with 25 seniors on their roster. Oh, my gosh. How many do we have? We not, not that we many. And <laughs> Miege moves on the, okay. on the encroachment. Okay. Labette County went to the hard count. So encroachment against Bishop Miege. Get it five yards, third and two for Labette County. Tonight's rep crew, the referee tonight is Mike Marshall, the umpire Rob Sutton. The linesman is Mike Cock, line judge Chad McFarland, and the back judge Brian Abbott. And there's the snap, and oh, they called a timeout. They there were called two. a timeout. Timeout, Bishop Miege. There were too many men on the field, and one of the stags couldn't get off the field in time, so the coach had to call a timeout. And 
the LCHS coaches in the box next to us are high-fiving each other after forcing that timeout on the Stags. So timeout Bishop Miege for too many men on the field. We'll take it with them. 30 seconds on KOKC. Hi, it's Brian at Bowen Pharmacy. Today I want to visit with you about the flu shot. It's that time of the year. And at Bowen Pharmacy and Bowen Pharmacy South, we have, did you know that most insurances pay 100% of your flu shot? That makes it zero dollars, no out-of-pocket expense to you. If you want your flu shot and you want us to do it, please come see us. And we'd be more than happy to always take care of you and your family where your family comes first at Bowen Pharmacy. After the timeout, LeBec County faces a third and two at their own 28-yard line. Cooper Peak in the shotgun. Nathan Smith split out left in so single coverage. Three wide receivers to the far side. There's a snap. Quick slant route to Smith. He has a step caught and a completion of nine yards to Smith. First down and ten. LeBec County is now they're moving out to their own 37-yard line. Yeah, and my eyes were on Smith and only Smith that whole time. I didn't even watch the play happen behind the O-line. I was just watching him. He was all alone over there. As Trey Vincent, the freshman, checks in now at the slot position. Quick curl route batted down as that big defensive front for Miege gets a hand up, and that's number 89 for Miege. Mason Weber, 6'4", 257-pound defensive lineman. Yeah, and Cooper would probably appreciate a few more inches on him, you know, trying to look over that D-line. Quick slant's been the stuff so far. As there's another slant route to Nathan Smith, caught. There we go. Gain of seven, six. They'll get, no, they will give him seven. So gain of seven on the completion from peak to Smith. Third down and three. Now for the Grizzlies, they inch out to the 44-yard line. It's probably not going to take me age long. Well, they probably already know who our best wide receiver is, so they're probably going to lock him down pretty quick, but maybe not. We'll as you see. look out across, they still press coverage on Smith. Yeah. As they are given, now they back off three or four yards given to each wide receiver. Smith and Vincent on the near side, peeking the shotgun. Evans at the running back. There's this quick slant once again to Smith as he catches oh, oh. it. Ooh. He had it blown up by two different stags. Oh, man. As Smith just got sandwiched. Fourth and three now for the Grizzlies as Caleb Haggard will come on to punt it away. Back deep for the Stags, number 11, Felipe Wesley, the junior six-foot, 182-pound wide receiver. Haggard back to punt it as there's the snap, and the punt is away as he gets away this one. Not a bad punt. Taken at the Miege. 30-yard line, Did whistle he blown. I never saw him wave. The fans were kind of acting like. We will take it, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead of, because we had him wrapped up, number 11 for the Grizzlies. Andon Sturles had him wrapped up, but uh, that guy got kind of shoved Andon off like Andon's nothing. We know Andon. <laughs> yeah. He's a big kid. Yeah. And a force in the SEK, but again, we're not in the SEK tonight, Jack. Yeah, that is true. We are. Right outside KC. We are right outside KC, <laughs> located in the heart of just the center of it. I don't know how else yeah, you want to say. You're yeah. in between a lot of different suburbs. Right now, Miege back in the shotgun. There's a snap. Quick slant out, fired to the wide receiver. Haven't seen a number. It's number 11. Felipe Wesley Flag gains 15. Personal foul. Be a face mask. Face mask against Labette County. So 15 on the reception for Miege. As we'll see if they just say incidental or if they're going to say it's a bad face mask. As they mark it off, mm. it will be 15 yards tacked on to the end of the reception. So 30 yards in total as Miege will now be inside Grizzly territory at the 39-yard line. Back in shotgun are the Stags. One running back, Corbins, or Cobbins, to the right. Two wide receivers split out to both sides. There's a snap. Another pass coming. Nearly intercepted by number 54, Hunter Milburn, who just dropped back and got his hands yeah, up. It's a D-end. <clears throat> got his hands on it, knocked it down. Second down and 10 for the Stags. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, that first play, they gained – 
15, plus another 15 from a face mask, and there's an incomplete there. So maybe just if we can bring up a third down, maybe even would be a success. Shotgun set, fakes the handoff, rolls out to his right, looking to pass. There the you go. Right there, Caleb Haggard Good job, Caleb. meets him and takes him down. Loss of 14 on the sack by Haggard as the quarterback just didn't know who was there. As that's number 18, the quarterback once again, Timothy Dorsey, who's wrapped up and taken down by Haggard. So, Miesian unfamiliar territory, third yeah. and 22 now for the Stags. Yeah, and that is like, that's the best thing that you could ask for if you're a Grizzly fan there. There's a snap looking for a pass. Quick out route to number three, Daniel Jackson. That's the Minnesota commit. Gain of 10 on the reception. They going for They're this? They're going for yeah, it. Fourth gosh. and 10. As you would think, they'd be That's pretty dirty. confident coming into this game. So Dorsey in at shotgun. Three wide receivers now to the far side. Solo receiver on the near side. Cobbins at the running back. There's a direct snap to Dorsey. Looking to pass. Still looking. Steps into one down the middle. And that is number three. Jackson breaks a tackle by Ethan Jamison. Walks into the end zone. Flexing his muscles. Quick strike there on the fourth down attempt. Pass complete for 40 yards and a score. Yeah, that was a really nice pass there. I mean, there was a safety there, and, of course, the guy that was guarding Jackson was just behind him on his hip a little bit. So he had a window that he had to get it in. It's not like he was wide open. That was a, that was a nice pass. Extra point attempt here for Miege. There's the snap. Kick is up. It is good. No signal yet. No good. He pushed it wide left. All right. 13 nothing. Miege leads. 6.53 to go here in the first quarter. We'll keep it right here as I'm going to shout out a couple different people here. Every Monday at 7.30 a.m., catch Sparson Sun Sports reporter Sean Fry's weekly radio show, The War Room, on KLKC 106.7. Each Monday morning, he will recap the weekend in sports locally, hit big national news, and will feature an interview each week. So remember, every Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. on 106.7 KLKC. And for many years, Dr. Terry Rothstein has hosted Doctor on Call at 7.30 on Thursday mornings. Catch this show live as he welcomes callers with medical questions. That's every Thursday on KLKC, brought to you by Labette Health. Miege set to tee it up for the third time in this quarter, leading 13-0 to zero as it's once again their kicker, number 39, Hudson Plum. I don't know how you want to say his name. P-F-L-U-M-M. Uh, I don't know. Take like a shot at Flum? that one, Jack. I don't know. Like with a little P ring to it? I don't know. Plum? I don't know. And there's a boot <laughs> again out <laughs> oh the back of the end zone. Three times consecutive, he has just booted it. So Lebec County, once again, will have starting field position at their own 20-yard line, first down and 10. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've seen a couple of good things here on the Grizzlies' offensive, or their first couple of offensive drives, you know, obviously with Smith being the highlight of that statement. But, you know, I wonder how long it takes before Miege closes that gap on Smith. You know, I mean, before they double him or something. We'll find out soon, Jack, is... Cooper Peak in the shotgun sends Vincent in motion. Looking to pass, looking for the deep ball to Nathan Smith. And just out of the reach of Nathan Smith in coverage for the Stags. Number 21, Rishi Ratton, a senior defensive back, 5'9", 168 pounds. So second down and 10 now for the Grizzlies. There was their shot play to Smith. Yeah, so Smith's got three, maybe four inches on his defender and Obviously, as we know, can jump out of the building. So I guess we're not in a building, but if he was in the press box, he could jump out of the press box. As there's a snap, quick screen route. Again, knocked down by the Miege defensive front. As Chase Evans just gets flattened <laughs> by number 45, Jack Kincaid, the junior 6'3", 206 pounds. As Evans just kind of looks up at him, and Kincaid helps him up after the play. Yeah, and that's the second time that a stag has helped one of our players up after knocking well, him down. They know the situation. Yeah. They know the size difference. Yeah. As Peak back in the shotgun, Lebec County will call timeout. We'll take it with them. 30 seconds on KOKC. 
Over 75% of students say Lebet Community College was their first choice in choosing a college. At $105 a credit hour, it's easy to see why so many students are choosing the Business Administrative Technology degree at LCC. That's nearly half the cost of the university. The Business Administrative Technology program offers students the skills necessary to perform in fast-paced business and medical offices. LCC students can earn a degree as an administrative assistant or medical administrative assistant in two years. Certificates and clerical assistant or medical office assistant in as little as one year. Go to labet.edu to enroll today. Thirteen to nothing. The score here at Dixon Dole Stadium, on the campus of Bishop Miege High School. Cooper Peak comes out in the shotgun set. Hard count. A little movement from the Miege front, but not enough to get a flag. Three wide receivers split out to the far side. Smith in solo coverage on the near side. As there's a snap rollout to the right. Big block there from Evans. As they will throw it to Smith on the side. As oh. they say he didn't stay in bounds. Pass incomplete. Would have been a first down had Smith stayed in bounds. That was a good – that was a pretty good throw. It was a good throw. Great play design there by Coach Price and his staff. Yeah. But nevertheless, another four and out here for the Grizzlies in this first quarter. I, mean, I wonder how many targets Smith has compared to the other receivers. Oh, I'd say majority. I think it only <laughs> went two times to another direction. Yeah. So Smith will be the highlight tonight for the offense. And the primary target is Haggard's on to punt. And there's the kick. Quick kick as they run into Haggard. No flag. Haggard looks over, over there for you go. it. As Trent Brock's holding on for dear life as LeBec County <laughs> just flattened a couple of the guys for Bishop Miege. I don't know if you saw that, Jack, but 82 went flying across <laughs> for uh, Bishop Miege as he got pummeled. I don't know who it was. I didn't I, see the number. All I see is this Miege body going flying yeah. back about four yards. Well, that's so, something you like to see. That's I mean, something you, know, you like it. to see. Yeah. And so, Lebec County will now have the best starting position. Well, not really, but another decent spot to start for the defense. Yeah. Miege will start in Grizzly territory, though, at the 46-yard line. First down and 10. Dorsey will be in the shotgun with Cobbins to his right. Three big receivers split out to the near side. As there's a handoff to Cobbins, as he's just quick. Oh, my god. Quick gosh. and shifty as he's just sw sw swerving. He can't even say my words. Swerving across <laughs> the field, and he's finally – Tackled by number 28, Evan Flat. That's a good so tackle. Flat records his first tackles. He gets him at the ankles. Gain of 18 yards on the carry by Cobbins. Yeah, and that's the that's the third that I can think of touchdown saving tackle Flats had this year. He had two against Independence. Dorsey in the shotgun again. Pitches it to number three, Daniel Jackson. As he looks to get the edge, and he has blockers out in front of him. And he is no signal yet in for the touchdown. Another quick scoring drive by the Stags. Yeah, and they're going to go for plays two here. And a touchdown. They missed their last field goal, so what do you do? Or last extra point, what do you do? Nope, they aren't going for it. They're leaving them. They're going to kick it. Yeah, well, I, just, I saw like a coach had like two up in the air, so I thought maybe he wanted to even it out. So 19 nothing the score here in the first quarter. As there's the kick, line drive right through the dead heart of the uprights. 20 to nothing the Stags lead, 551. Still to go here in the first quarter. <laughs> Taking a while. As it seems like the clock isn't moving quite quick enough for the Grizzlies. Sponsors for tonight's game, we want to say a huge thank you to these guys for making it possible for us to cover the Grizzlies this season. Lebec Community College, Forbes Hoffman Funeral Homes, Clemens Insurance, iCare Associates of Parsons, Lebet Health, Lebet Banks, Woodworth Community Services, Herman Lumber, Carson Wall Funeral Homes, Bartlett Co-op, Commercial Bank, Tom Davis Auto, Olson's Ace Hardware, Tank Connections, Wood Doolahary, Bleacher Gear, and USD 506. Miege set to tee it up once again as it will be number 39 kicking it and back deep. Now it's Andrew Jamison checking in to take it for the Grizzlies along with Trent Brock. Is this oh, going to yeah. be kicked in Jamison's direction? He'll take it. As he's going to take it yeah. right at the goal line. Oh, oh, you can't do that in high school, I guess. Oh, I guess not. I didn't Since know that. his foot was in the end zone, it is a touchback as Jamison is looking to return one yeah. there for the Grizzlies. <laughs> he's going to take it to the house. 
Like, I didn't know. I guess we don't really see that much, but I didn't know that yeah. was a We don't thing. deal with that too much down <laughs> in the SEK. <laughs> nope, we don't. First down, 10 for the Grizzlies. They'll have familiar starting field position for this drive on their own 20-yard line as we're hoping the Grizzlies can make a little bit of movement here and get a score on the board. Cooper Peak at the shotgun, Chase Evans to his left. Two wide receivers split to the near side, one to the far side. As there's a handoff to Evans up the middle, he'll follow his blockers. And no gain on the play. Looks like a loss of about one on the carry from Evans. As Evans looks a little shook up as he's holding his arm in a funky position right now. Yeah, that's not that's, something you want to see. No, and it's going to be second down 10, so they give him back to the original line of scrimmage. Grizzlies will split out two to the near side now. There's a pass to Nathan Smith, caught on the slant, and a gain of 12, 13 on the reception to Smith. As Smith's a little slow to get up. Oh. God. As he is oh my. really hobbling. I don't know what's going on right now with Nathan Smith. He That's, wants to play the next play. He wants to play as he's taken down by number 21. Rasheed Ratton. It didn't look like Smith got rolled up funky in any way, but he's staying in there. Yeah, man. Solo receiver to the near side, trips to the far side as Evans is in the backfield with Peak. As it's the left leg of Smith, and he can't even run on this possession as they're rolling out to the right as Peak throws an interception to Bishop Miege. And the Grizzlies will wrap him up and take him down. Maybe. Yeah. As it'll take five Grizzlies to wrap him up and take him down at the – 29-yard line, so it'll be first down and 10. Lebet can't, or Bishop deep inside Grizzly territory. Smith is slow making his way to the sideline. Yeah, and that kind of makes me wonder if, because I saw Peak talking to his O-line, I wonder if they didn't change the play maybe and run it away from Smith's side just so he didn't get involved in any traffic and take a shot that maybe would have you know, done something ugly to himself. It looked like it was his knee, but I don't, I don't know. As the training staff is over quickly to check on Smith, as we keep an eye on that on the sidelines, they are going to take a look at him. Miege in the shotgun looking to pass. Quick slant route out to number 11, Felipe Wesley. Breaking a few tackles, shedding some tacklers. Still going. And it takes four Grizzlies to take him down as he is down to the six-yard line. First down and 10, Bishop Miege. And you talk about Jackson being a D1 receiver. Yeah. This Wesley's making quite an impression. Yeah, that was a really nice cutback. Made like a herd of Grizzlies miss. Looks I don't like know if that's Sammy what. Sammy Watkins back in week <laughs> that's one. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a timeout. Officials timeout. As Somebody else hurt? It looks like Trent, Trent Brock will come off. And we will see the senior, A.J. Kohler, check into the game for the Grizzlies for his first varsity snap of the season. They're snapping a handoff to Cobbins as he's going to run all the way to the outside. And the Grizzlies force him out of bounds at the two-yard line as that was number three, Ethan Jamison, and number 13, Russell McCarty for the Grizzlies. That was a good job collapsing on the ball and cutting off the edge, but I love seeing A.J. get a get some playing time. That, just, that makes me happy. So A.J. ends. There's going to be a quarterback sneak. To Dorsey, and he's just following that big, powerful offensive line for Miege. As once again, Jack, we just see another Grizzly get pummeled to the ground, and <laughs> Miege is right there to give him a head slap and hop him right back up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, once you get down there, you know, inside the one or so, it's like a fist fight in a phone booth. I mean, you know, it's just, it's all right there. <laughs> There's not much room to work with, is there? So 345, Miege on the board again, 26 to nothing, the score here in the first quarter. As there's a snap, the kick is up, and it is good. 27 to nothing, our score. We'll take 37, 30 seconds here on KLKC. It could happen any time or place. You feel a tingle in your face. You move your arm, your arm feels weak. The words won't come when you try to speak. Folks may think it's all a joke, but it ain't no joke. It's a stroke. Face, arm, speech, time. That sounds fast. fast. Better call 911. At Strokes First Sign. Time means brain, so don't waste time. Time means brain, so don't waste time. Act fast. Face, arm, speech, time. Act fast. Face, arm, speech, time. Act fast. 
fast. In an emergency, take me to Labette Health. For the Grizzlies, still 345 on the clock here in the first quarter. Labette County trailing the Bishop Miege Stags 27 to 0 the score. As back deep for the Grizzlies, it is Trent Brock and another new face. I don't know who's back there this time. Is it Chase Evans again? Oh, man, Looks I like can't it. tell. A boot from Miege. It's a low one. We're going to get to return a kick here. It looks it's right like to Chase Evans. As Evans tries to find a hole, lowers his head and gets out to their own 27-yard line. So better field position yeah. this time for the Grizzlies. Yeah, First I mean, down and 10. Maybe we can, you know, two first downs get you close, if not in stag territory. So We've been in stag territory once, and then we went backwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Jack, your uh, memories yeah, getting a little rough now. I'm old. You're old. You can't say <laughs> After that After I hurt my knee, I felt old, and then it just <laughs> transferred to the brain. Oh, my goodness. Cooper Peak in the shotgun. <laughs> Chase Evans at the running back, and Chase is just clobbered as soon as he gets the handoff by the Miege front. Loss of two on the carry. Second down and 12 now. Jack, I said time of possession mattered. Um, I don't think we're going to be able to run the ball against this defensive front. Yeah, no, I don't either. And the time of possession might not look that bad at the end of the game because it doesn't take them long to score. So I That mean. is true. <laughs> if we're looking at numbers. That is true. Second down and 12. For the Grizzlies. High snap, not good. Cooper Peak getting back to it as he falls down on it at the eight yard line. Something we haven't seen a whole lot is a bad snap from yeah. the Grizzlies. But in that situation, the Grizzlies now face third. And my favorite saying, a country mile, but I don't yeah. like it right now. Yeah, no, I don't either. And honestly, I mean, Cooper's lucky to have fallen on that because you know how footballs are. You don't see many of those get. Caught by the first guy that jumps on him. Usually they squirt out, you know, and it takes two or three guys before it's lassoed in. Yeah, Jack, you talk about uh, just the, the this game in general. I mean, we can talk about numbers forever and ever. Yeah. There's a snap to peak, and he's looking to throw back shoulder to Nathan Smith. Pass and complete. Brings up fourth down and forever as the Grizzlies will come on to punt. We still, again, look at a team that has 72 guys to Labette County's 39 in uniform, 40. Yeah. And you also look at a private school versus a public school. It is what it is. It's a state rule. But there's some kids here that are pretty athletic, and we're in an area where there are a lot of 5A schools around. Low line drive kick by Haggard. Flag on the play. So if there's anything there positive is. about that, Haggard gets hit by the Stags. Quick flag came out by the White Hat. So we'll see. Personal foul. We'll see if it's roughing or running. We don't know yet. 15 yards or 5 yards. We'll see where they mark it at. But private school versus public school. They, they can recruit kids to come in here. They're in a suburban area where there's a yep. lot of talent. And so it's just a rough setup for the Grizzlies right now. And it doesn't help that we've seen them the last three years, so it's a little bitter to most yeah. of the coaching staff when you talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. I was – yeah. Yeah, that's true. That is Not true. Gonna, yeah. As the Grizzlies will come back out, they'll they get an automatic first down check. I think they got an automatic. We got first an automatic down. first down. Hey, first down yeah. and ten for Labette County after the penalty. Must had to have been roughing. It must have been roughing. I fear that was just a fifteen yard penalty, but well, it's right. an automatic first down for the Grizzlies. We'll take it. Quick slant to Nathan Ooh. Smith. Looked like the defender was there a little early yeah. as he went high on Smith. But Smith hops right back up. Doesn't look to be hurting too bad on his ankle on that play. Yeah, no, he really doesn't. I mean, I know how tough and dedicated he is, so that's not a problem at all, but not enough to keep him off the field anyways. So second down and 10 now for the Grizzlies at the 25-yard line. Their own 25-yard line as Vincent's in motion. Smith and solo coverage here to the near side. Trips receivers to the far side. Evans is the running back. And there's the snap. Peak looking to pass, looking for Nathan Smith as he looked like he was being held there by the Miege corner. 
No flag is thrown. But to me, Jack, it looked like there's a little, lot of hand fighting. One resulted in a jersey tug on Smith. Yeah, and Smith's beat him. I don't know if that's the same corner or not. It but is. Course, uh, yeah, I mean, Smith's been beating him, so maybe he's showing a little bit of frustration. It's just not getting called. Grizzlies facing a third and ten now as Trey Vincent comes back in at the slot. Jones and Royer split out to the far side, and Smith over here on the near side with Evans in the backfield along Cooper Peak. Royer in motion. Quick pass as Cooper was just looking to get rid of it as somehow Isaiah Royer ends up on his back on that play. Huh. I didn't really follow him. I don't know if the corner blew him up when he came across or what exactly happened. Fourth down either. and ten, however, for the Grizzlies. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he thought he had the ball on the – on the fake sweep, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. But I Royer, hope that's why. Royer was slow to get <laughs> up as Haggard's back on to punt for the Grizzlies. As there's the snap of flag. Encroachment? Offsides? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Offsides fake against it. the Bishop Mie Stag. So shorten that down another five yards. Fourth and five now for Labette County. And like you mentioned, Jack, maybe a little fake here. What do you I, have to lose? You're down 27 I don't know. Maybe you see a little bit of Haggard special. I don't know. As there's a snap, and he's just going <laughs> to boot it away. As it's a backspin kick taken by Miege at the 48. Quickly tackled there by number 23, Trent Brock, before he's finished off by a couple other Grizzlies. Joel Matheson on the tackle along with number 54, Hunter Milburn. First down and 10 for the Stags at – the Grizzly 49-yard line. And Trent's one of those guys where usually we're tired of saying his name by the end of the broadcast, you know, but we haven't. I'm tired I don't of know saying he, NBA players. Well, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, Trent hasn't gotten many touches on offense yet. Dorsey back in at the shotgun. There's a snap, fake the handoff to Cobbins, rolling out to the left, Haggard in pursuit. Caleb puts Dorsey on his back, but a slant route out to number three. Jackson, oh my goodness, he just keeps slinging guys every which direction. And he is finally brought down at the 40-yard line, 39. I'll say 41, 41-yard 41 line. It is 40, 40-yard line. Yeah. I switched that number about three yeah. times, but I really <laughs> no, looked, yeah, wasn't really it. sure yeah. where they were going to go with it. As Haggard could have got thrown for a late hit there, but the official was nice enough not to give it to him. As there's a snap, Dorsey quick screen route out to number 11, Wesley. Flag on the play, wrapped up and brought down as Wesley by number 11 and in Searles. Great tackle by Searles there yeah. on the play. Yeah, that was a nice tackle. Him and uh, along on the defense, Evan Flats, really good tackle on Andrew Jamison. You know, this defense is good. It is. It's good. I, I mean, you know, We're it, just... the scoreboard numbers may not show it. Who cares? Who cares? I think this Grizzly defense is good, and they've shown us that throughout the season. Penalty against Bishop, Bishop Miege holding. Back him up 10 yards, so... Be a first down and 20 for the Stags. Yeah, you talk about the defense, Jack. They are a good defense. Yeah. I mean, we've seen it all year in the SEK. And tonight, they're just matched up against someone who's a lot bigger than they are. Yep. And there's still a lot of young faces we'll see next yeah. season on this defensive That's line right. and throughout. Dorsey on the pass to number three, Jackson. Oh, my. As he makes a few men miss, still on his feet. Man, this kid has some moves and some speed as Billburn's in pursuit. And Jackson is in for the touchdown. Jack, Jack, I can see why he's going to Minnesota. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, I don't care who you're playing. I mean, he made half our defense miss, and, you know, that's impressive and on its own. He broke about three tackles. Yeah, yeah, he did. I mean, he's just on a whole new level. This yeah. kid's just fast. He's explosive. Yep. He's powerful. Yep. He's what you want in a receiver especially at a D1 level. Yeah, definitely. 33 to nothing the score here in the first quarter. Still 23 seconds remaining. As the kick is up, dead through the uprights once again. 34 to nothing. Stag's lead. We'll take 30 seconds here on KOKC. When Derek was in sixth grade, he hurt his knee, and it bothered him, but not until really last year after 
He played in a tournament and we decided to make him an appointment. He had a torn meniscus. I was the most impressed how fast Dr. Meister was able to schedule me in and be able to repair my knee as fast as he did. As soon as I got to therapy, I knew it was gonna be a quick recovery. After a 30 minute surgery in five months, I'm back to 100% playing sports again. Still 23 seconds remaining as Miege is set to kick it off for, I believe, the fifth time in this quarter alone. <laughs> no comment, Jack? No, I was, it's six. It's six. Six. I, I was trying to think of something to say, so I might as well just see if you were wrong. Deep <laughs> kick. LeBec kind of not even going to touch it. Hits right on the oh one-yard line. Gosh. It barely rolls. It hit the end line. The official. Yeah. It may not have went in the I don't end think zone. it did. I don't know, but the White Hat was nice enough to give us the touchback. <laughs> Oh my First down gosh. at 10 for the Grizzlies at the 20-yard line. That hit and died. I mean, died. That didn't move. Jack, pardon me, really thinks maybe we need to take this uh, little name sheet for Miege home and watch in a couple years and see how many guys are playing college football. I know, yeah. I, a few, obviously. <laughs> we know a few. Yeah. As LeBette County back out on offense, 23 seconds still remaining here in this quarter. As it's peak getting the play from the sideline, Evans is in the backfield. Two wide receivers split out to the near side, one to the far side. As I keep scanning the crowd, we've heard rumor that Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey were supposed to be making an appearance tonight. As there's a pass from peak looking for Derek Jones, the intended receiver, incomplete, second down and 10. Jack, I don't know where to even begin to look if they show up. Yeah, um... Well, is it, is it his Mahomes' brother that's supposedly playing? It's a half brother. Okay, well, I know he... step brother. Step brother is what we discovered. Okay, we don't know his name, but we've heard it's a step brother. Okay, well, I mean that's cool. Obviously, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I would look for the swarm of people with flashing cameras. I would think you're there. He's hiding somewhere. He yeah, I, I doubt they'll place. come, but that's that's just me. As another pass from Peak to number intended for Smith, picked off by number 42 for the Stags, Grant Fussell. Senior DB, six foot, 181 pounds, 40 to nothing now for the Stags. It's, I'm just curious, Jack. These fans are still going ballistic. This is crazy. Yeah, it <laughs> 40 to nothing in one quarter. It doesn't seem right, does it? As Miege will set to kick another extra point. They got a T-shirt can out oh. here. It's all lit up. It's really impressive to look at. Yeah, I thought it was a Kick can. is up. Dead through the uprights. 41-0 to zero the score here. 8.9 seconds remaining in the quarter. We'll keep it here. Every Monday at 7.30 a.m., remember you can catch Parsons Sun Sports reporter Sean Fry's weekly radio show, The War Room, on KLKC 106.7. Each Monday morning, he will recap sports locally, hit big national news, and will feature an interview each week. So remember, every Monday morning at 7.30 a.m. on 106.7 KLKC. And then for many years on Thursday mornings, Dr. Terry Rothstein hosts Doctor on Call at 7.30. Catch this show live as he welcomes callers with medical questions. That's every Thursday at 7.30 a.m. on KLKC, and that's brought to you by... LeBet Health. Miege set to tee it off for the seventh time in one quarter. And Jack, it doesn't make any better, but Miege gets the ball to start second half. Oh, yeah, that's great <laughs> news. Maybe with this kick and how good this kicker is, it might land at the, as time expires. Low line drive bullet kick. I think they're trying to keep it in bounds. <laughs> on the play, number seven, Ryan, Ryan Casson just got leveled and rolled 10 yards. <laughs> They're strong, Jack. I mean, that kid just blew him up. Yep. And it's just he continuing did. to happen as it looks like Miege just wants free shots every time they're going down the floor field on kickoffs. Yeah, I mean, come on. I, it's 40, rough. 41 0. You know your opponent. Why? I'm Why? looking for some fifth string guys to come in this ball game. Why Maybe lay in the second out? quarter. Maybe in this last 8.9 would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> As I will say, there is a different corner in the ballgame to cover Smith. So maybe a few guys yeah. have rotated in. 
Two wide receivers split out to both sides. As it looks like Evans is still in the backfield. As it's Trent Brock in the backfield. And another pass in intercepted by Miege. And they score. Time as time expires in the first quarter. Make it 47 to 0. Bishop Miege, after one quarter of play, was still an extra point to come. I did not expect that. Well, I mean, there were 23 seconds left, and it was 33-0. I was like, okay, all right, they won't score again. Two pick sixes. They scored twice in 23 seconds. Yeah. As we await the kick, there's a low snap. Kick is up, dead through the uprights. It is good. 48 to nothing the score. Bishop Miege in control from the opening minute. As we'll take 60 seconds here on KLKC. Over 75% of students say Labette Community College was their first choice in choosing a college. At $105 a credit hour, it's easy to see why so many students are choosing a degree in welding. The LCC Welding Technology Program prepares students for a career as a welding professional in a wide range of fields. Me and my kids are living very well because I have joined a workforce that there is a future in. Students can choose to earn two different certifications in as little as one year or an associate degree in as little as two years. Go to labette.edu to enroll today couldn't work as long as I wanted to, you know. I'm getting older and my knee would start hurting and I'd have to quit. It wouldn't hurt much if he didn't do anything, but I don't want to not do anything. So I went to see Dr. Mosher and determined we needed to do a knee replacement. That worked like a well-oiled machine. All you have to do is be there and do what they say and everything goes great. Simple as falling off a rock. It was just 10 weeks ago that I had him in surgery and this morning I rode three miles on my bicycle and For Labette County, to say the least, 48 nothing the score here at Dixon Dole Stadium. As Miege set to tee it up after a pick six. Low line drive kick, not even going to be touched by Labette County as every one of the kicks has been a touchback. Familiar starting field position for the Grizzlies. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Yeah, I wonder, you know, Will, how many times have we ran the ball tonight? Three, four? Four and negative yardage. Yeah. I mean, so I don't – I mean, obviously there's nothing you can do. Are we going to win? No. I mean, but I do wonder if we just – I mean, you have to throw or you have to pass. This is yeah. football. But, I mean, what do you do yeah. to just at least contain, get something, you know, maybe gain six yards and then punt? <laughs> We've gained six yards and punted. <laughs> yeah. But, man, it's been a rough night for the Grizzlies all around as we knew what we were seeing when we came in. As there's a handoff to Brock up the middle, and Brock just goes nowhere. And we're not used to seeing that at all. No. As Trent usually is about two, three yards a carry as yeah. he's brought down after a loss of one. First down, or second down and 11 now for this Grizzly offense. As Jack, I'm not too sure you could have put this Miege team up against maybe a small, small Juco college that's not known for football. It'd still be a good game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, they got D1 athletes on this team that we've seen in action tonight. Because there's a lot of size and speed on that whole team defensively and offensively for Miege. As Peek will shift to two running backs to both sides and Haggard and Brock, one wide receiver split out to both sides as we'll have a timeout here from Coach Price. 48 to nothing the score. All Bishop Miege will take the time out with them. 60 seconds on KLKC. When it comes to choosing the best health care for yourself and your loved ones, there are other hospitals. And then there's our hospital. The difference is that while other hospitals will care for you, we will actually care about you. Other hospitals make decisions based on what's best for their bottom line. While we do what's best for our community. If you're looking for a pretty hospital, they're out there. But if you're looking for the best hospital, it's here. And here. When award-earning care is as close as this, there's no reason to go anywhere else. At Labette Health, we center around you.
Second down, 10. The Grizzlies take a shot. Cooper Peak going deep down the sideline to Nathan Smith as it was a beautiful ball, but tipped away at the last second by the Miege corner. Third down and 10. The Grizzlies face as there's a handoff to Trent Brock okay. as he's trying to bowl himself. Go. Nice run there by Brock. Gain of about eight on the carry. Fourth down and two as the punt unit comes on once again for the Grizzlies. As that was an awesome opportunity for the Grizzlies. Go for it. What do you have to lose? Yeah. But now Miege not going back very far as the return man's only 20 yards behind the ball. Maybe they're expecting a fake here from Labette County in this situation. 48 nothing the score, 10-22 on the game clock. As there's the snap to Haggard. And a Good beautiful punt. punt. Oh, my gosh. Backs up Miege with oh a my. roll. Picked up at the 15-yard line. Labette County in pursuit. And in Searles held no flag. And there goes Miege. Blockers out in front. He's fumble on the play. Labette County back ball. on the ball. That's Grizzly football. Fumble on the play. Labette County has it. The officials have not signaled, what? but the ball did come out. The White Hat's going to say he was down. No. They said his knee oh was down. There is no gosh. way. Coaches won't like that. That knee was down. Nope. I, I couldn't believe it. that ball was out well before he went down. But the officials don't say so. Be first down and 10 for Miege at the Grizzly 24-yard line. Yeah, that's just one of those, you know, that you wish you got. One of those breaks that you wish you had. Now Bishop's down in, where are they, 22, 23, 24-yard line already? I said four yeah, numbers. One of those had to be right. Hand off up the middle to Cobbins. He finds a hole, runs right through a Grizzly defender, and finally brought down at the 13-yard line. Tackle made there by Ethan Jameson, number 50 or number 23, Trent Brock. So second and one for. The Stags, they're just snapping another hand off to Cobbins. They're going to keep holding. it on the ground, holding on the play as Haggard was held. So despite a first down, it'll be first down, set first down taken away from the Stags. Back up the holding call. Looks like 10 yards, so it'll be, be another first down, Jack? Yeah, yeah, second down and around 10 or so. I th yeah, that's a. there's been a few... Or wow, second and geez. Yeah, you're right. Second and twenty. But yeah, there's been a few holding calls tonight, so you know, that's a good thing. That means somebody on the Grizzly D line has given someone on their line fits. So second down and fifteen for the Stags. They're starting behind the chains that which they haven't done too much. <laughs> Snap to Dorsey looking for a pass. To number three. Oh my. As he's gonna yeah, he, high step his way into the end zone. Got an in is that Kanan? Kanan's that hurt. Kanan Kampmeyer, number three on the reception. As that's Daniel Jackson in for the touchdown. Kanan Kampmeyer is on the ground, however, rolling in a lot of pain as Coach mm. Price and Chris Brown make their way over on a jogging pace. As we'll step aside for 30 seconds here while they attend to Kanan Kampmeyer, the senior. Hi, it's Brian at Bowen Pharmacy. Today I want to visit with you about the flu shot. It's that time of the year. And at Bowen Pharmacy and Bowen Pharmacy South, we have, did you know that most insurances pay 100% of your flu shot? That makes it zero dollars, no out-of-pocket expense to you. If you want your flu shot and you want us to do it, please come see us. And we'd be more than happy to always take care of you and your family where your family comes first at Bowen Pharmacy.
injury was. He's walking. I didn't think he'd be able to walk. As I'm pretty sure it's probably his shoulder, Jack, as he's okay. not letting that right shoulder move much. Okay. He's swinging his left one, but not really his right one. As he's slowly making his way over with Coach Price and head athletic trainer Chris Brown. Either way, touchdown, Miege. Fifty-four to nothing. The score. As Miege is waiting, the signals are waiting for Kane and Campmeyer to make his way all the way to the sideline. Still waiting as now there's the whistle and the ball is up. Extra point good. 55 to nothing. The score here for Bishop Miege as we'll take 30 seconds here on KOKC. Over 75% of students say Levette Community College was their first choice in choosing a college. At $105 a credit hour, it's easy to see why so many students are choosing the Business Administrative Technology degree at LCC. That's nearly half the cost of the university. The Business Administrative Technology program offers students the skills necessary to perform in fast-paced business and medical offices. LCC students can earn a degree as an administrative assistant or medical administrative assistant in two years. Certificates and clerical assistant or medical office assistant in as little as one year. Go to levette.edu to enroll today. Team setting the ball on the team back deep for the Grizzlies. It is Andrew Jamison, number 25, and number 23, Trent Brock. It's an ugly game here at Dixon Dole Stadium. 55 to 0 the score. 856 remaining in this first half. As deep ball to Andrew James. He's gonna bring it out. And get it out to about the 23, 4 yard line. Great return there by Andrew. First down and 10 for Labette County. As we'll see what the Grizzlies have in store on this offensive possession. Hopefully we can move the ball down the field a little bit better. Doesn't look like the starters are still out there on the field right now for Bishop Miege. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we talk about returners for this Grizzly offense. You know, quite a few are coming back. Derek, Jones, Noah Yeoman, Cooper Peak, Trent Brock, Chase Evans. So, you know, we're going to be all right next year. So, I mean, I would just fluff this game off, to be honest with you. I mean, I think they know I mean, that. Any time you play Bishop Mead, yeah. you might as well just write it off. Yeah. As Trent Brock gets the handoff there, and there's a flag on the play, so probably a face mask against Mead. It looks like Brock gets back for a gain of, I would say, one. Yeah, he definitely worked hard there. Yep. As it Good is call. a face mask against Bishop Mead. Tack it on 15 yards. From the end of the run. So it will be a first down for Labette County as they are now out to their own 37 yard line. And Jack looking ahead, as we know, this is evidently going to be the last game of the year for the Grizzly football team. Yep. We're going to get an opportunity to see the Grizzly basketball team in action. Join us yep. on the radio December 6th as they'll be at home against Clearwater for their season opener. That'll be fun. I'm excited. It'll be fun. It'll also be. The chance for first-year head basketball coach Bradley Argerbright will take the reins after Brad Smith decided to step out following last season. As there's a handoff to Brock, looks like he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Is talking about Coach Smith, Jackie's a great guy. Love, love oh, him to yeah. death, and I'm glad to see that he's finally getting to do what he wants to do and enjoying yeah. his free time. Yeah, that's right. He definitely deserved every bit of it. And one of my favorite guys of I, I just I loved Coach Smith. I mean, you know who didn't really. As what? the crowd's going <laughs> crazy, as number 99, Lonnie Reed, the freshman, checks in. <laughs> a big freshman, 6'2", 325-pound lineman. Oh I'd my. say there might be some hype surrounding that name as he's lined up across from Joel Mathis. As Joel's going to take him on and get there him. There you go. Caleb Haggard finds a hole, and Haggard's off for the races at the 30, cutting back across. There you go. Hey, hey come come on, on the end zone. He's at the 10, 5. Touchdown, Grizzly! Let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. As Caleb Haggard breaks what looks to be a 65-yard touchdown run. What a run there by Caleb Haggard as we are on the board, Jack. 
That's right. And I was getting ready to say, I thought maybe you'd chuckle at me. I want. I, I was going to say, I want to score. I want to catch. I, was gonna, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to predict Smith catching their corner off guard on a deep route. But, hey, that works that too. That works too. As Caleb Hager breaks one for a score, what a <laughs> change for the Grizzlies as it is. Jack, I'm noticing this game clock is running. Yeah. As we have a running clock already in this first half as Miege leads 55-6 to six with an extra point to come from Caleb Haggard. As there's the snap, the kick is up, and it is good. He got it. It is there good indeed. Go. 55 to 7 the score. Clock is running here in the second quarter. We'll take 30 seconds here on KOKC. Hi, it's Brian. Hi, this is Brian West at Bowen Pharmacy, and thank you for being with us today. Once again, the time is upon us. It's flu season. And at Bowen Pharmacy and Bowen Pharmacy South, we have you covered. We have the high dose, the quadrivalent, as well as all the pneumonia vaccines. We could even do your shingles vaccine if you'd like. Did you know that Medicare pays 100% of your vaccines? And we are proud at Bowen Pharmacy to be able to bill it for you. You come and see us today and we will get you taken care of. And we always thank you and we're proud to take care of you and your family. Have a wonderful day. Five fourteen, get another stop score. Go into the locker room. Fifty-five twenty-one. We got ourselves a ball game. Will <laughs> Jack, you forget the clock's <laughs> running here. I have not four fourteen in county. <laughs> as it is a running clock here at Dixon Dole Stadium. As there's some excited dudes running out on the field for the Grizzlies. Yeah, number twenty-four. I realize, man, he's getting after it. And that is, let me find Braden him Lewis. on here. That is Braden Lewis, a senior. Yeah. He's playing in what might be their final game. Yeah, I love Braden. He's a hard worker. So, Lebec County trailing 55-7 to seven as they will kick off the ball for the first time in this game as it will be Haggard set to tee it up. And there is an onside, an onside kick. Uh-oh. And fumbled around, then covered. Lebec County almost had one. Yeah. Miege will have starting field position at the 44. And, hey, what do you got to lose? They're scoring in two minutes every time. Well, yeah, I mean, and this is like – top three in their top worst starting I, field positions of the game. Yeah, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure this is their third string in, so perfect time to do it. Yeah. As Definitely. now the clock is down to 315 and rolling. Still the starting quarterback, Dorsey, in as number 25 now. Josh Conklin, the junior running back, will check in six foot, 177 pounds. Two wide receivers split out to both sides. As there is the snap, dropping back, looking to pass. As he finds, well, he's oh. looking for number 84. Max Heller hits him right in the chest, and he drops it. So second down and 10 now for Bishop Miege. Maybe we are seeing the lower end now for Miege, which gives the Grizzlies some confidence. Doesn't yep, hurt. Clock is right. running. That's right. He did the classic turn and look up field before it's in your arms move. Dorsey's still in shotgun. There's a snap as it is a pitch to the running back. Flag on the play. Knocked out of bounds there by number 54, Hunter Milburn. 25 on the carry, Josh Conklin. We'll see what the flag is. I believe it'll be a holding against yeah. the Stags, and yep. it is. And Lebec County will back him up. So instead of a 10-yard carry, it will go backwards 10 yards. And so, or five yards, so it must not have been that big of a holding call. Second down and 15 for, or maybe it was from the end of the run. It was from the, the yeah, the spot so of the foul yards. or wherever, yeah. 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 So yeah. second down and 14 for Bishop Miege. <clears throat> As there's a quick slant out to number 19, Richard Estel. Gain of what looks to be about 10 yards on the reception. We'll give him 12. Third down and two now for the Stags. Yeah, you, yeah, they've definitely – I don't think Jackson's even out there. No, he's not. Uh, yeah, no, he's not out there. So, yeah, definitely you're, if, you're if, on the money. They brought out their 
lower you, and you can, guys. you can totally tell as there's a handoff at the middle now if it's line just clears a hole and it doesn't matter as number 25 josh conklin is through a hole and he is gone touchdown bishop miege 40 yard scamper add another six to the board 61 to 7 the score Gosh. in the first quarter can we hold them under 100 this. can hold we hold them under 100 yeah. Like if the that, clock runs, I think so. Yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. As long as we don't throw too many pick sixes. <laughs> as they'll be on for the extra point. 61 to 7. 29 seconds now as the clock will expire before anything else happens. As there is the snap. The kick is up. Line drive. They look at each other. It is no good. Okay. Pushes it left. Ethan Jameson applies the pressure. 61-7 to seven is the score here at the half as both teams will make their way to the locker room. We'll be back for the second half in about 15 minutes. Terry, I'll let you know when it happens. This is rough.
Because, you know, compared to last year's game, at half it was like, oh, 35-0. Maybe we scored. We may have had six or something like that. But, oh, my goodness. It's a whole different <laughs> ball game. 61-7. to seven. And I, I think, you know, even if they did play, like, you know, everybody knows, even if they did play their lower-level JV or whatever, they're still better than we are. Um, but I, I think this will be a more bearable to watch second half. I do. I think it will be. I don't think they'll be as insane. I I think we'll see that. They may put up thirty more points, but I don't think it'll be a sixty-one to seven. You know, like it was in the first half. Is my point? Yeah. As it's we talk about, we've mentioned the name Daniel Jones number three several times. Oh, and my. it's just a coincidence. Jackson, Jack, Jackson. Jack want or Daniel Jackson. Sorry. Jack wanted to look him up on Google, and you type in Daniel Jackson football, and first thing that pops up on Twitter is Daniel Jackson from Bishop Meage <laughs> High School, and the kid had is a four-star wide receiver, Jack. What else we say? He had offers to K-State, Kansas University, yeah, Minnesota. Yeah, I'll read them off. It'll load here. So we'll see. Jack's pulling it back up. Just listen, listen to yeah. the offers. I mean, this explains what the talent yeah. you're up against. So he committed to Minnesota, as we said, 30 times. But he also had scholarship offers from both Kansas and Kansas State, Iowa State, Iowa, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, Texas A&M, and Arizona State, which those aren't just football programs. Those are football programs. Yeah, those are powerhouse <laughs> programs. And I, there must have been something intriguing about Minnesota because yeah. the first name that comes up on, or the name that really lights up in my eyes, man, Iowa State. Mm-hmm. Coach Matt Campbell, I mean, we know Easton Dean's there last year. I mean, we had the opportunity to watch him for four solid years. And that's not a program that's joking around. I mean, it's a solid football program. It's just a shock to – I mean, he, that's one of the programs he gets told no over Minnesota. And yeah. so they're just big guys. And what else you got to add, Jack? Yeah, well, I was just uh, – I was going to add, I was reading a little bit and uh, it quotes him here. It says – that he said there really isn't anything in particular that put Minnesota over Wisconsin or Iowa, but more of a gut feeling and some tiny things that I kept to myself. It says that he just just being there, Minnesota, really felt like home. So it just seems like one of those like connection things to where he, it just felt right to him, you know. Same thing that Easton said when he decided to go to yeah. Iowa State, and it's just that connection. Where where does it feel the best? Right. And so, best of luck to him. We yeah. hope we do not see him <laughs> the rest of this game. <laughs> Sixty-one to seven, the score is. Miege will receive to start the second half as they deferred till the second half and have chosen to receive. We'll take thirty seconds here on KOKC. When it comes to choosing the best health care for yourself and your loved ones, there are other hospitals, and then there's our hospital. The difference is that while other hospitals will care for you, we will actually care about you. Other hospitals make decisions based on what's best for their bottom line. While we do what's best for our community. If you're looking for a pretty hospital, they're out there. But if you're looking for the best hospital, it's here. And here. When award earning care is as close as this, there's no reason to go anywhere else. At Labette Health, we center around you. Bishop Miege, it is 61-7. to seven. Miege will receive as it will be back deep, number 26, Carson Key, as he is a junior, 5'6", 137-pound running, running back slash DB is what they have him listed at. Caleb Hager will be set to tee it up. I won't be surprised if we don't get to see us an onside kick. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you know what? half I mean what are you gonna lose I mean and I mentioned you know like the field position heck I mean anywhere in their own territory is as good as it's been just barely across the 50 really so Caleb Haggard has it set waiting for the game clock to get says it's set at 12 minutes hands are up as we await the whistle there is the whistle from the white hat and we are here to start the second half and it's a squib kick up the middle Taken at the 24-yard line. Finding a way to the outside is number five, uh, Justin Fountain. Wrapped up there by Andrew Jamison. And was it 59 or 58, Jack? I think it was 58. 58 for the Grizzlies. We're going to tag some yards onto the end of Mitchell this. Mitchell House. Afraid. As it is a personal foul face mask against Labette County. Tack on an additional 15 from the end of the run. So, 
We should have just squib kicked it. Or not squib kicked it. We should have onsided it. <laughs> as they will have even better field position than they would have if we did onside it. Yeah. yeah that they're going to be, <laughs> be all the way down at the Grizzly 36-yard line. Jeez. Great field position is Gosh. it looks like. I think we're going to see a different quarterback here, Jack. Their not, number nope, like, isn't on Dor their shoulder Nope, pad. he's still there. Dorsey is still in at the quarterback position. Yeah, you mentioned they have stripes down the side. Looks like they're in Adidas uniforms. Handoff up the middle to number 25, Josh Conklin. Tackle on the play there by Braden Lewis and Andrew Jamison. Gain of three. Second down and seven. Yeah, so, I mean, already a little slower tempo offense here by Miege. Here's another run play. Conklin up the middle, wrapped up again by Jamison. Is Conklin still pushing the pile as Andon Searles and Ethan Jamison are all come in there. Jamison <laughs> doing a little dance at the end of it. And that's Ethan, not Andrew. Gain of another <laughs> three on the run. Third down now and four for Bishop Miege. Yeah, and Ethan's one of those players that I have enjoyed watching a ton. He's just a lightning bolt for this defense and has made many career interceptions over his career as a Grizzly, so I'm really happy for him and his success. Third down and four. Handoff up the middle to Conklin once again as it looks like. Oh, he barely got it. He Man, that's going to be right at the yard marker. We'll see where they mark him. Going to be a first down for Miege on another run play. First down and 10 now at the Grizzly 25-yard line. Clock is winding down now to 9.52. Yeah, I wonder if, I mean, nothing's really happened that would stop the clock, but I wonder if they're going to keep it running here in this second half too, I would imagine. As there's a pitch now to number four, Bartholomew Osler the third around the end. That's one heck of a name. <laughs> K to five, down to the red zone are the Stags. First down or second down and five. I thought I saw the ref throw a flag, but obviously I was. Well, uh, did they're he talking. Throw? Yeah. I don't see a flag I on I the ground. Him. I thought he I saw him pick throw it up. Something. Yeah, he did throw a flag. I so there is a flag on the play, back at the twenty-three yard line. Looking like it's on. It's us. against Labette County, half a distance to the goal. First and. Goal is going to be right at the 10-yard line. It's first down goal for the Stags. That's like the third face mask on the Grizzlies this game and like four or five total for both teams. So first and 10 are the Stags in Grizzly territory. From So first and goal at the 10-yard line, however you want to say it. Dorsey back in shotgun with Cobbins. Not Cobbins. 25, Conklin. Pinch out, pitch out to Conklin as he's looking to get the edge. Grizzlies in pursuit. He's going to cut it right back up the middle. Get down to the three-yard line. Tackled made by 67, Robert Tobel. First time we've called his name tonight, along with number three, Ethan Jamison. Yeah, and I thought the runner there for a second was going to throw it. I thought maybe it was a trick play. He kind of stutter stepped, and I thought he was going to drop back and try and throw. Snap again, handoff up the middle, Good wrapped deed. up. Great play there by number 24, Braden Good Lewis, the senior, read that perfectly and tackles Conklin for a loss on the play. Third down now and goal from the four-yard line. Nice play there by Braden. He's had a couple plays like that there in the backfield tonight, and I'm you know happy for him. Obviously, another senior, last game as a Grizzly, so you know it, it's going to be a little emotional. It was last year on the field at the end of this game. Snap again, another pinch out to Conklin. He's looking to get the edge. No one's going to be there. And he sneaks in as he cuts it upfield for the touchdown. Touchdown, Miege, 67-7 to our score. While we have some time, we're going to thank the sponsors once again in case we don't get to it in the fourth quarter. But we're very thankful for these guys and their support of Grizzly football this year. Labette Community College, Forbes Hoffman Funeral Homes, Clemens Insurance, I Care Associates of Parsons, Labette Health, Labette Banks, Woodworth Community Services, Herman Lumber, Carson Wall Funeral Homes, Bartlett Co-op, Commercial Bank, Tom Davis Auto, Olson's Ace Hardware, Tank Connections, Wood Doolahary, Bleacher Gear, and USD 506. Bad snap there by Miege 
as they try to scramble and throw the pass to get a two-point conversion. They don't get it. So don't add any more points to the board. <laughs> 67 to 7 the score. Clock is winding. We'll take 30 seconds here on KLKC. Hi, it's Brian at Bowen Pharmacy. Today I want to visit with you about the flu shot. It's that time of the year. And at Bowen Pharmacy and Bowen Pharmacy South, we have, did you know that most insurances pay 100% of your flu shot? That makes it zero dollars, no out-of-pocket expense to you. If you want your flu shot and you want us to do it, please come see us. And we'd be more than happy to always take care of you and your family where your family comes first at Bowen Pharmacy. Stadium, home of the Bishop Meage Stags, who are the favorite to win the 4A state title for the fifth consecutive year as they have the greatest odds at 56%, trailed by Toganoxie and Paola at 36%. As it is going to be Plum, or Flum, pardon me, kicking it off for Meage, and it is a boot. Oh, my Man. goodness. Did they recruit kickers, too? I have no idea. I mean, there's just dudes doing everything. Their <laughs> yeah. kickers kick it far. Their defense lights it up. Their offense is quick and explosive. I don't. I want to know where all these guys come from. Yeah, and I would like to have watched them play in one of those or both those games they lost just to see, I mean, are those teams better? I or mean, was it, may, it just an off night? I it mean, may be interesting. We always see the ugly side. Let's come up and yeah. watch them play St. Thomas Aquinas, St. James Academy, whoever the yeah. heck they play, Rockhurst. All those 5A schools, because, I mean, that's the league they're in, Blue right. Valley. As Peaks back in at the shotgun, Brock is lined up to his left. And two wide receivers split out to both sides for the Grizzlies. As a handoff up the middle to Trent Brock, gets to the there edge and passes it to the outside, lowers his shoulder and picks up 13 on the carry there from Brock, because that's been a bright spot for LeBette County, surprisingly, here late in the first half into the early second half, is Trent and Caleb have both ran the ball well here on their couple carries. Yeah, and like, you know, all season long, Trent Trent Brock has kind of been like the nucleus of this offense, really, for the most part. I mean, you know, Smith's really versatile, but really, for the most part, Trent, had, I mean, he's scored most of the points for the Grizzlies this season. Another handoff to Brock up the middle, lowers his shoulder and continues to run. Out to what looks to be a gain of seven is what they're going to say. Second down and three now. And only, the th I believe, the third carry there for Brock in this game. Yeah, that sounds about right. And so he will return next year as you talk about. There's only one true senior, I believe, on the offensive side of the ball. And that is number 14, Nathan Smith. As earlier in the season, we lost Austin Jones, our senior quarterback, and went out again following. Oh, man. What Fort, game was no, it? it wasn't. Not Fort Scott. After Fort Scott, wasn't it? Yes. And another pitch out to Trent as Trent picks up the Wellington. first down. Out to the 45 now is Brock. And, indeed, it was the Wellington game when Jones went out once again. So, Jones has been out for it, remained out for the remainder of the season. So, a rough season for him, not the way he wanted his senior campaign to go. But – doing well yeah. considering all. Yeah, definitely. As Ethan Jameson is now in at the receiver position, maybe wanting to get a little action. Yeah. <laughs> wanting to catch a few balls here in his final game. 3.04 to go here in the third quarter. Cooper Peak in at quarterback will flip Trent Brock to his right. As there is a snap Peak looking for Smith on the quick curl. As he catches it, breaks a couple tackles, and now he is out or into Miege territory at the 48-yard line. Yeah, nice little second effort there, too. I mean, that's the first true chance we've seen for a Grizzly to make a second effort and, you know, still continue running. I mean, Smith gained two more after the second lunge, so still like to see fight in the Grizzlies. Second down and three for the Grizzlies now. Smith's looking over for the play. As there's a snap and a handoff up the middle to Trent Brock. He's going to try and find his line. Breaks a couple tackles before he is knocked down by the Miege middle linebacker. Number 82, John Pedrotti is what we're going to go with. <laughs> the junior 6264-pound linebacker. You have your shot at that what, one. What buddy. number? 82. Yeah. 
That's <laughs> Pedrotti, if yeah, I had I to guess. I think that's what I said. I'm not really sure. Yeah, you did. yeah that's got to be right. Two wide receivers split <laughs> out to both sides. Brock now at the shotgun. As he fakes the pitch to Peak, he's going to follow some outside. blockers and get to the outside. Has J Derek Jones out in front of him as Brock just lowers his shoulder. Gain of 17 on the carry there by Brock. Grizzlies marching down to the 32-yard line now in Miege territory. Yeah, this is a little bit more pleasing to the eyes, you know, seeing some room. But, yeah, we've seen a lot of interesting names this season that we've had. We've learned a little bit, been cultured, you know. There's some good names on this Miege roster. There's yeah. another fake pitch to Peak as Brock keeps it. Looks to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. 109 now on the clock here in the third quarter. As it looks, Labette County trying to pick up the tempo a little bit. Coach Price and his offensive coordinator, Brock Wolf, are down on the sideline together. So no offensive coordinator up here in the booth to our left. As Peek will flip Brock back to his left, two wide receivers split out to both sides. Jamison in motion. There's a high snap oh, handled wow. well and handed off. Great play there by Peek as he gets it to Jamison somehow. As Jamison looked a little slow to come around the edge. Third yeah. down and 10 now for the Grizzlies. Yeah, Cooper had to Odell the snap. That was, that was, pretty, that was a nice catch. It was. So he did go up with one <laughs> hand and pull it down. Grizzlies, third and 10. 16 seconds on the clock here in the third quarter. It's not good whenever you make a Sports Center top 10 catch off a snap, but hey. Whatever pleases your bubble right now, Jack. <laughs> Hey, I'm enjoy well, I'm not enjoying this, but you know, I'm just making light of the moment. There you go. Third down and ten. Peak in the shotgun once again. As that is the end of the third quarter. Grizzlies trailing Bishop Miege 67 to 7. We will be back in 30 seconds here on KLKC. It could happen any time or place You feel a tingle in your face You move your arm, your arm feels weak The words won't come when you try to speak Folks may think it's all a joke But it ain't no joke, it's a stroke Face, arm, speech, time That it's smells fast! Better call 911 At Strokes First Sign Time means brain, so don't waste time Time means brain, so don't waste time Act fast! Face, arm, speech, time Act fast! Face, arm, speech, time Act fast! In an emergency, take me to Labette Health Well, Jack, you didn't know this was coming. It's been a pleasure to call this season with you on football. For your final time as a senior in football, you got the call. I'm stepping oh, out. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Will. No, no, yeah. It's It's been a really fun year. You've done a great job and covered for me whenever I was sick last week. So, It's all yours, buddy. All right, so we have, let's see it here, a third down and ten for the Grizzlies. There's a snap. That's Trent Brock in the Wildcat. He'll take it right up the middle, and he will be brought down for about a gain of four here. So bring up fourth down and – Mid for the Grizzlies, fourth down and six, we'll say. As they're still running, <laughs> they you were gone last week, like you mentioned. They're still installing that where Peek and Brock flip around and they can fake it, they can throw it, whatever they want to do, which looked to be a good package last week. Yeah, yeah, and after that trick play, that really kept the Chanute defense on their toes, but it wasn't enough to get away with the victory. Cooper Peek there with the snap. He'll take it, he'll look deep left, and it is caught. It will be caught for the touchdown. That'll be Nathan Smith, I believe. Yes, sir, and that is a Grizzly touchdown. So that'll be a 27-yard touchdown. What a catch by Nathan Smith. Those are the catches that you see highlighted on, like, before Sunday Night Football, they go through, like, high school catches. That was a good catch. And an even better throw by Peak. As yeah. you didn't notice, he was pressured there. and Got hit. His arm got hit midway through throw as it was straight up in the air after the release. Yeah. And that's an encouraging sign for the Grizzlies with Peak only being a junior. Yeah, that was a great catch. And the reason I say that, there was a catch by, I think, Columbus. Yeah, it was Columbus last week that made it on, like, some sports center deal. But, yeah, so that, you know, that's pretty cool. That's a great catch by Smith. There's the snap and the kick, and it's just a low kick. It'll be no good. I'm not sure if that hit the helmet sure that, of a lineman. I'm pretty sure that went off the back of one of our linemen's <laughs> okay. heads. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. But I believe, let's see here, yeah, John Kohler, who couldn't walk a week ago, 
is our placeholder. So he's gotten to run two plays tonight, and he couldn't. And he's still like limping today at school. I was like, "Man, John, man, why are you why are you placeholding? You're you just you couldn't walk four days ago." But hey, I love his dedication and loves the game too yeah. much. Yeah, that, yeah, well, yeah, that is true. But Jack, real quick for one last time, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these guys uh, every Monday morning at 7:30 a.m. Make sure you guys tune in to listen to Sparse and Son Sports Reporter Sean Fry's weekly radio show, The War Room, on KLKC 106.7 FM each Monday morning. He recaps the weekend in sports locally, hits big national news, and will feature an interview each week. So remember, every Monday morning at 7:30 a.m. on 106.7. KLKC. And for many years, Dr. Terry Rothstein has hosted Doctor on Call at 7.30 on Thursday mornings. Catch his show live as he welcomes callers with medical questions. That's every Thursday on KLKC, brought to you by Labet Health. Okay, so we got a different kicker here for the Grizzlies. Cooper Peak is lining up to kick for the Grizzlies. So we'll see what we have up our sleeve, unless it's just a normal kicking scheme. I'm not sure. First time we've seen it this year. Yeah, all year long. There's Cooper, and it will be like a little squib onside, and it is bounced around, but it will be down by the Stags at their own 40-yard line. I mean, maybe they're trying out a kicker for next year, Jack. Yeah, I know. I mean, hey, this is just the point where you, you know, try different things, really, and right. he will obviously be back next year. I mean, so. our cameraman down here is pointing to light himself like he's going to go kick for the high school team, so maybe Harrison Hall will be out there next yeah, year for him. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that. I know Harrison's an athlete. I know, uh, I know he'd do a great job. So I'd like to see him play personally, but he's listening to us right now. So I'm trying to influence him to play next year. But he's not we'll sure around looking at. Yeah, us no, anymore. he's not looking at us. Eight twenty-six and counting to go. Labette County trailing Bishop Meade sixty-seven to thirteen. Looks a little better. It's not really. Yeah. Good, well, I mean, you know, whenever you score, it says a, of a big old goose egg up there. That's true. As it was the whole first quarter. <laughs> First down and 10 for Bishop on their own 40-yard line. Quarterback in the shotgun, running back right off his left hip. Takes a snap. He will hand it off. Number 35, I'll get a name for you in a second. Bounces off one tackler and will be brought down. That's a loss. Oh, he lunged forward just a little bit there, so a gain of nothing there for number 35, Jack Valdivia, the 5'11 junior. Now I'm having to work to get these names out. As LeBec County calls a timeout here, Jack. Oh, okay, I didn't even notice. I'll read off our sponsors. This is our last game of the year, so I I'll hit you. our sponsors one more time, Will. Sponsors for this season, and hopefully we get to keep some. And if you have yeah. a business, we'd love for you to join in sponsoring Grizzly Basketball. If you're interested in that, make sure to call KLKC and visit with them. But sponsors for tonight's or this season has been Lebec Community College, Forbes Hoffman Funeral Homes, Clemens Insurance, I Care Associates of Parsons, Lebet Health, Labette Banks, Woodworth Community Services, Herman Lumber, Carson Wall Funeral Homes, Bartlett Co-op, Commercial Bank, Tom Davis Auto, Olson's Ace Hardware, Tank Connections, Wood Do Lahari, Bleacher Gear, and USD 506. So remember, if you have a business and you're not on that list and you'd love to be a supporter of Grizzly basketball on the air, make sure to get a hold of Wayne Gilmore or somebody at the KLKC station. Yep, that's right. Thank you, Will. Here's a run up the middle for the Stags. He finds a crease and then is ripped to the ground by the helmet. That's a gain of seven on the carry, six on the carry rather. Bring up third down and four for That's Bishop. Braden Lewis is in on the tackle there Was for it the Braden? Grizzlies. As there's some shuffling in and out happening now, Jack. I don't know if you're getting all those numbers. <laughs> yeah, Ryan Casson comes in for Andrew and one's already on the line and I can't tell who it is, but there's a snap run up the middle again. He will be met at the line or at the first down line, rather, and that will be enough for a first down. Looked like Braden was in on the tackle there that time, at least one of the three, and the crowd cheers again, so I'm assuming another maybe Freshies going in. I yeah. don't know. I, I, I saw someone come out. And I am going to tell you, though, Jack, you didn't call him, but A.J. Kohler, or, er, yeah, A.J. Was, AJ was in, in there? on that tackle there, getting his first varsity tackle. Yeah, thanks for being my spot. I There's a bunch of people on the tackle I couldn't see. I just saw him all up and go up and give him a hug. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. There's a run up the middle again. Brought down by a herd of Grizzlies. Braden Lewis there again on the tackle. Gain a four or five on the play. A.J. Kohler right Wait, there. A.J. Again. in there again, man. He's, he's plugging. He came off the bottom of that pile, and he's getting after it. Heck, yeah. Working in the trenches. 623 and counting here to go in the game. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I we we know what you know AJ's been through, and so he's done a great job handling that. I love seeing him. You know, play. He loves football. Loves being around the guys. He was in the circle, like the hype circle, holding the football, giving the pregame speech. Oh my gosh, that that's awesome. Second down and five to go for Bishop. There's the snap. Handoff up the middle. He'll get about three yards on the carry. Nice job there by the Grizzly defense. It so bring like up third down and short. Ethan Jameson gets another tackle there. Yeah, he's definitely, like, ever since he was, like, a freshman, has been one of the leading tacklers on this defense. And his brother this year has just tore it up on the stat sheet in tackles this year. There are a lot of new bodies out there, Jack. I wish you luck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, this game's almost over. We'll be all right. <laughs> And it's 67-13. to 13. So third down and short. Quarterback in the shotgun. He's a long ways back. It looks longer than a regular shotgun. He'll, he'll take the snap, hand it off, and is met behind the line of scrimmage immediately. He'll be brought down by, like, four Grizzlies. Let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this. Okay, 62. I don't know who that is. Ryan Casson, 22. Braden Berger. And I said 62. Evan Bima. All right, so I got at least three of the five there. Who's number nine, Jack? Number nine, Braxton Edwards. I saw him check in over here. That's why I was curious. Okay, yeah, playing some cornerback. I know he was like third string quarterback, or I know that he had worked. He had worked out at quarterback. I know. I mean, he did. So fourth down and short for Bishop. Something we have not said much tonight or at all. There's the snap and the toss to the left side. It'll be close. It looks like he did get it. Tackle made there by number eighteen, Luke Ryan. I'm not going to lie, it's a little frustrating, Jack. You're up 67-13, and you're still going for it on fourth down. Right, not really giving us a chance to go score again. But, hey, I mean, I guess, you know, in all theory, we should have gotten a stop there. But, hey. So, it'll be first down and 10 for Bishop inside Grizzly territory on the 38-yard line. As Ethan Jamison checks out for the final time as a Grizzly. Oh, man, I know that. Quickly that's, consulted there by yeah. Coach Argerbright. What a career he's had, definitely. Loved watching him play and look forward to him tearing it up on the basketball court as well. There's the snap and the handoff as usual, and he will find a crease and will be brought down after a gain of about six. Number 24, Braden Lewis, and number 22, Braden Berger there on the tackle. So Braden Berger is stepping up and making some plays in the minutes he's getting to play here late in this game. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for these young guys, and you just see Coach Bryce sitting back watching these young guys. This, yeah. this is his future. I yeah, mean, that's he right. He has some guys standing on the sideline that he'll get back next year, but uh, great opportunity. That's right. There's the snap and the handoff, and he's met immediately, but will break the tackle. And after picking up the first down, there is laundry on the field. Will be brought down, looked like number nine. Braden Lewis did get up from the tackle, but it looked like number nine, Braxton Edwards, that was there for the initial contact. We'll see what the flag is all about. It'll be holding on Bishop. I don't know who 68 is. He's not on your roster. I don't know if he's on the JV side of this. I bet he is. 68, Glenn Price. Oh, really? Just got flattened. I mean. Well, I didn't want he, you to say that. But. Well, I didn't either, but I mean, he got a flag <laughs> for it. Oh, okay. That's what, okay. like, picked him up and held him and then <laughs> put him on the ground, so he got flagged for it. Yeah, there you go. You know, coach's son getting in there, freshman. So, I mean, heck. I mean, Some hey. good signs. Yeah. So second down and 11 for Bishop here. After that holding call, quarterback in the shotgun. Take the snap and hand it off and is met immediately in the backfield. That was Luke Ryan. Couldn't make the tackle. So to assist him there after he missed was 21, Cale Smith. 71, Jack oh, Harness. Oh, 70, that looked like a two. 71, Jack Harness. That looked like a two from here. Number seven. And number seven, Ryan Casson. So it's looking like a battle of the JVs here, you know, to end the night. That's so. all right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Believe me, yeah, that's just fine. Just under two minutes and counting to go third down and long for Bishop. Quarterback is, is talking to his running back who is – About tripped over his own feet and fell down. <laughs> yeah, who's a pretty big dude. So I'm assuming. Young, looks like a young quarterback. Yeah, yeah, it does. There's the snap and the toss to the left. Luke Ryan misses a tackle again, and he's breaking three tackles, and he will be pushed out of bounds after a gain of six on the play. 31. Number 31. 
Let's see if he's on the, on the yeah side. another yeah there most of these players are going to be on the JV side. Cody Hamilton, who did have an injured ankle a couple or just came back from that ankle a couple weeks ago, heard it in a JV game. Oh, probably four weeks ago. So recovered from that nicely out here getting some minutes in and assisting a, on the tackle. He's supposed to be known for wrestling, so I'm sure he'll make a <laughs> decent football player here soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Good at wrestling. Got to be good at tackling, right? I would think. <laughs> takes people down pretty quick. Yeah, nice tackle there. So fourth down and six here for Bishop. It's a draw up the middle and a great tackle there in the backfield. Is that – Ryan Casson. Ryan Casson. Looks I like he created a fumble and he got yeah. the ball. Did they give – all right. Good for you, Ryan. That's an awesome job getting the tackle there in the backfield. He was there immediately, and he got the fumble. So that's just the cherry on the, what do you say, cake, icing? I don't on know. This game's almost over. It's 67-13. to 13. We're going to go eat plus. some Buffalo Wild Wings here after this. So I'm thinking of some honey barbecue boneless with ranch, you know what I'm saying? So 23 and counting to go here in the final game of the season for the Grizzlies, and they are lining up to shake hands as the Stags come away with a monstrous victory. Once again, 67-13. to 13. Will, any last words? This is the end of the football season, man. It's the end of the football season. We'll get into a warm gym and be able to watch some, hopefully, some <laughs> That's exciting right. That's right. basketballs. We're going to see first-year head coach Bradley Arger Bright put together, hopefully, a yeah. decent season as they will play their first game December 6th at home in Harris, the famous Harrison Auditorium against Clearwater. So we hope you'll tune in and join us if you're not at the state or at the gym. It'll be a good one to the Grizzlies opener. I'm Will Owens. Jack, it's been fun. Yep. We look forward to basketball yep, season. Definitely. As the Grizzlies tonight fall to the Bishop Miege Stags, 67 to 13. I'm Will Owens alongside Jack Leak saying good night here from Dixis Dole Stadium at the campus of